Good morning. We're back in Warsaw. Uh, one of my previous customers, we did the drive in one of the last videos actually. And uh, now we're back to do the rear patio. A couple of steps. Um, it's only a little one really. Uh, we're going to be doing the wall tops as well. And then not only are we going to be cleaning this, but we're going to be repointing it as well. So I'm going to start by grinding out all the joints. Some of the joints are, are sort of already already gone really, but um, some of them will require grinding out. Uh, we want to go about two and a half centimetres down. I think we're also going to try and tidy up these walls a little bit because they're a little bit black. So I've got the um, sodium hypochlorite ready. Probably going to be applying it through the gardener backpack because there's no access um, from the front. So we're going to have to come through the house. And they've laid all the sheets and everything down, so that's really handy. Um, they've also asked me to do the gutters today as well, so I'll get around to that towards the end of the day, hopefully. A couple of loose slabs, which isn't ideal for um, repointing. You can sort of hear when you walk on them, they're a bit more hollow. Um, the, the jointing compound isn't designed to hold these slabs in place. So any loose ones, once the compound's in and it's dry, there's a chance that it will crack if you were to walk on it. But they're aware of that and, you know, you've got to set the customer's expectations, I suppose. Right then, I'm going to go get the grinder out of the van. We'll get going. So tools for today, we've got the joint it neutral jointing compound. I've <clears throat> got three tubs of that, I don't think I'll need all three, but worth bringing. I've uh, got a couple of these, this is for compacting the jointing compound after you've put it in. Uh, and then we've got the angle grinder. Um, and then I need to change the disc on that for a different one. Let's have a look. Hello girly. This is the one we're going to be using today. Just a diamond cutting disc for concrete bricks, natural stone and tiles. That one's a bit thin actually, I should have got a thicker one shouldn't I? Maybe I've got an old one. Oh, I found one, there you go. It's a bit thicker that one, that'll do. Welcome to the channel, there's quite a lot of new people here. For some reason the channel's taken off a little bit over the last couple of weeks, so thanks for watching. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please feel free to do that below. It really does help. So I know repointing for some people is quite intimidating really, but doing it this way is it's not a it's not necessarily a technically challenging job, but it is quite hard work physically. You know, being on your hands and knees all day, lots of bending down, lots of dust in your face. Really I should have been wearing a mask here, but I forgot my dust mask, unfortunately. Which isn't ideal, I know. And I think I did quite well to do this all in one day as well. I'd say anything over about 50 square meters and you probably want an extra person with you or at least budget more than one day for the job. And I wouldn't even say it's the work itself that takes up most of the time. It's it's all the different stages of doing a job like this where you're constantly setting up and breaking down your equipment ready for the next stage of the job. And as an added challenge on this particular job, I had to bring everything through the house. And so when I was setting up and breaking down, I had to be mindful of where I was treading passing stuff through the window, unplugging extension cords, and then walking back and forward to the van. And it's just not very convenient at all. I always say to people, if, if there's no access to the rear garden and you have to go through the house with your equipment, you need to charge extra because it does take a lot of extra time. And not only that, there's a lot more risk involved when walking through someone's house, especially if they've got carpets and stuff, dragging your hoses up against the skirting boards. And this particular job is incredibly messy. And so I tried to get the customers to plan ahead and, and put some sheets down for me, which was which was really beneficial in the end, actually. I'm just pre-wetting down the windows here just to stop any of the dirt from sticking when I'm pressure washing. It makes the rinse down at the end much easier. I was shocked, actually, at how well this patio came up even before I used any chemicals on it. It's not often you can get a result like this with just water, especially when there's so much overhanging foliage and it hasn't been cleaned in such a long time. Normally you'd expect heavy black spots everywhere, 
but I think these reconstituted concrete pavers, although they were weathered, they were still quite smooth on the top. They still retain some of their coating. Sometimes when they're very old, the surface gets really rough and textured and it allows that lichen to absorb deep into the surface of the slab and it makes it much harder to clean than if the lichens just sat on top. You can see on screen here, the walls had these green weep marks where the water had been flowing down from the garden between the slabs on top and dripping down the same area over and over again. You generally find this sort of staining on render. These are the sort of marks where you do often need a chemical treatment to remove them fully. The other thing I didn't want to do is use too much high pressure on the wall and blow out all the pointing. But again, this one was in quite good condition, so I didn't have any problems. Here I'm just using the turbo nozzle at quite a low pressure. No reason to get the surface cleaner out of the van for such a small area. Sometimes it doesn't warrant setting up that equipment. You know, you might half the time it takes for you to clean the area, but if it takes you longer to set up, bring through the house and break down, it might not be worth it. And you've got to weigh up what makes sense for each scenario, really. And I think that's a reflection of the industry as a whole, really. There's so many different ways you can do one job. Some people online will have you believe that you've got to do it this way because this is the best way to do it. But I think it's not the case. Everyone finds their own. Everyone finds a system that works for them. People find different chemicals, different products, different pieces of equipment that works better for them. It might not work for someone else. And I think that's where you've got to be careful about advocating so much for one way of doing something just because it's worked for you. Some people will die on a hill of their opinions and experiences and they'll criticize anyone that doesn't do it their way. And that person's generally setting their ways and they're not looking for growth and you can't really tell them otherwise. I think you should always try and learn from people who you can actually have a discussion with, people that are more open-minded, someone that will listen to new or different ideas that aren't their own. Just gonna have some lunch while I'm waiting for the hypo to dwell. Just give it as long as possible. Okay, um, <clears throat> the hypo's been down for about probably half an hour now. Uh, most of these green spots have gone. Uh, I put it in like one to one there, so it's very, very strong. And they're still, still kind of there, but I'm very happy. I mean, these walls, this wall, I didn't really put much effort into that. I just give it a light pressure wash and then a hypo treatment. And it's come up brand new. It's brilliant. And these as well. They look awesome. I'm really, really pleased. Not a mark on it, really. So, um, <clears throat> next is the gutters, which are going to be pretty tricky, to be honest. Um, I actually haven't looked over there. How am I going to get... don't really think I'm getting behind there. Um, I've got the 90 degree head on there, just because um, I'm coming at it from, from such an angle all the way over here, trying to lean over the conservatory roof. Can I step across here? Oh. And the other bit they're concerned with is the neighbor's gutters keep dropping into theirs and filling these up. So I've explained like, because of the access, I'm probably not gonna be able to get all of it out, but I'll do my best. All right, let's get cracking. This is another scenario where yet again, I'm using another piece of equipment and it's another thing that I've got to bring through the house set up, break down. It all takes time, you can't underestimate these things. To be honest, I actually forgot that this was part of the job when I returned, because we'd quoted it such a long time ago. But I suppose this is where having a bigger van comes in useful. It means I can carry this sort of equipment around with me all the time. And if something like this comes up, I'll always be prepared. So as I said at the beginning, this is Joint It Simple from Pure Seal. I used to use the thicker stuff from Wix, um, but I found that this goes into the joints a little bit neater and you get a much smoother finish when you compact it down with that little tool I showed at the start. And I always found it difficult to get the colors I actually wanted in the thicker stuff. They never had the gray ones on the shelf. And on the Pure Seal website, you can choose from four different colors and they're always in stock, so that's a bonus. I've got links to all of my products, chemicals and equipment down in the description. Apparently this stuff also lasts a little bit longer through the winters. I think it's just a slightly more premium product and it came highly recommended so I thought I'd switch over and give it a try. So this stuff does go on wet, you can apply it in the rain or the sun, it doesn't really matter as long as you pre-wet the surface first and you can rinse it as you're brushing it into the joints. Some people say the wetter the better. I unfortunately didn't have a water supply at the back here so I had to use a watering can instead. I've been taught in the past that the key to applying this stuff correctly and the difference between it lasting one year or three to five years is once you've brushed it in is to compact that first layer with that tool that I showed you at the start 
but also then brush in another layer. So you're really filling up those joints. Some people will tell you not to use one of these tools because you want a flat finish to avoid water pooling up in the joints and then freezing and allowing the jointing compound to pop out. But I don't think that really makes sense because this stuff's permeable. So any water should just drain straight through it. I don't know, if any of you guys do this regularly, let me know in the comments if you've got a slightly different technique. I think the most time consuming bit is going around at the end, compacting everything. And I found it useful to take a little brush around with me and just compact it one last time and then just sweep any excess towards me. It's quite difficult to get a nice finish when you're compacting the joints and then sweeping them off because you end up sweeping more little bits back into the joint that you just compacted and then you get like a grainy finish, but that's quite unavoidable sometimes. I reckon I could have spent at least another hour going over it again and just getting everything absolutely perfect. But at some point you've got to just finish and call it a day and hope the customer's happy with it. Okay, and we're all done. Sort of stopped filming there towards the end because it was getting late and um, I wasn't rushing, but just focused on getting the work done really. Um, it's a shame it's sort of drying out because the colors on this pa patio are really nice. You can sort of see the colours a little bit more when it's uh, when it's still wet, but done our best with the walls here. Um, obviously, towards the corners, this stuff tends to just sort of fall out. Not really a lot you can do about that. And then this one's loose, so I've left the customers with a little bit of stuff to, uh, once they've stuck this back down, they can just fill these gaps themselves. Uh, but no, otherwise I'm very happy. The walls have come up really nice. Got got rid of all the algae coming down off of the walls on the back of the steps as well. The back of the steps were, were the worst bits for the algae. I had to put it on almost neat. And that overall the customers are happy. And uh, took a little bit more stuff than I expected. It was about two two and a quarter tubs. Uh, but it's just because the joints were really thick and deep. I also lost a hell of a lot of product on the back of these steps. The gaps were just massive. Not really a good use of this product, but it would have looked weird if I hadn't done those bits. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Now these videos take a lot of time and effort to film and edit on top of trying to run a successful pressure washing business. If you find any of the information in my videos useful, then I'd like for you to consider becoming a paid member of the channel. Circle members and above will get access to my private Discord for members only, where you can pretty much get a hold of me 24 hours a day for inspiration, technical help, marketing advice, or just a general chat. I post pictures and videos that you won't see on any of my other socials. You'll be the first to hear about giveaways, special offers, and announcements. And it's just generally a nice place full of like-minded people who are all heading towards similar goals. We've got various different experience levels. We've got a few professionals in the chat as well. If you want to push your business, in my opinion, this is the place to be. We also have two other membership tiers. One is just to show a bit of support for the channel and the other one is for boosted members which will not only give you access to the private Discord but also loads of high quality promotional images for you to start your business. I know what it's like when you're ready to get going but you don't have any before and after pictures to put on your leaflets. At the moment there's about 150 images that you can use for pretty much whatever you like and my intention is to constantly update these over the next few years with all of my before and afters that have helped promote my business. Last thing before I let you go New videos come out every Monday night at half five, and then I go live at half seven to chat to you guys and answer as many questions as possible. We do live quotes for real customers and just generally keep up to date with everything going on in the pressure washing world. Thanks for watching.